Uh, so we are here at Bayshore Scout Reservation. Uh, this is a Boy Scout of America campground. It is private property, so be respectful. You can come to this memorial stone that's dedicated to the memory of Joseph Johns. Uh, he was born into slavery in Fakir County, whether I'm pronouncing that right or not, it's in Virginia. He was on a plantation as a corn and cotton plantation. Uh, he was born 1794, could have been as early as 1789. Uh, he escaped north, arriving in Dauphin County around 1844, came to the Greenpoint area and lived on this farm owned by John Follier. Joe's home was a hut and a half, or was a hut a half mile south of this point. He died the 7th of February 1906 at the age of 112, could possibly be 117. We are going to go visit his burial site at Moonshine Cemetery. This particular site is maintained by the Boy Scouts, and this stone was erected in 1993 by the Lebanon County Historical Society. How much of the legends about him are true, we don't know. Uh, he did live a pretty hard lifestyle. Uh, the Collier lifestyle was very hard, making the charcoal. Uh, it was a lonely lifestyle, and it was one of those uh, lives where you really worked very, very hard. Uh, how much of the stories that are out there, the local residents who knew him before he died, all talked belovingly of him about how he was such a great individual and loved by the community uh, hopefully those stories are true a lot of cases it, that's not the life that uh, individuals that were african-american had in these communities but in this particular community apparently he was well beloved and thought very highly of he was an extraordinary man and thankfully we know a lot about his story uh, there is a community that was down the road from here near St. Joseph Springs where the events of the Blue-Eyed Six happened. There's a community called Africa. Unfortunately, we can no longer access that site or the cemetery of that community. But uh, how much of their experiences were like Joseph John's, I don't know. But we will go talk about that later in the video. I talk about it at my house and some of the issues with that. But... Uh, Joseph Johns is a man worth remembering. He's a local legend here in Lebanon County and most of all here in Union Township in Greenpoint. So with that, I will sign off. This is the gravesite of Joseph Johns. He was an African American who escaped slavery. He was on a plantation and I, I think it, Fequaic County, Virginia, uh, 1844, he escaped. They talk about that, uh, possibly one person escaped with him or two and whoever the other individuals were they had been caught and returned he lived to 1906 to 112 years old there is some controversy with that because he said he was about 10 years old when george washington died which would have been 1799 which would have mean he meant he was born five years earlier there's not records for him so nobody really knows so he could be as old as 117. Uh, they say he was... Uh, he settled on the farm of John F Fabler, north of the mountain west of Swatera Gap, Union Township. And he was actually, it's right down here. We're going to go down to the memorial at uh, Bayshore Scout Reservation and talk a little bit more about him. Uh, he was supposedly a beloved member of the community. Uh, he was an individual that uh, people really appreciated. How much of that is perhaps maybe sugar-coated? I don't know. Uh, he was a woodcutter originally. He came up here north when he escaped in 1845 or 1844 to Dauphin County. He eventually made his way east here to Greenpoint, uh, which at that time it was just known as Union Township. And... Uh, he settled on this farm. He was a collier, which means he made charcoal for the local uh, local uh, iron furnaces, especially the smaller iron furnaces were more likely to use charcoal instead of coal, which was with the big uh, furnaces in Cornwall. Union Forge would have used coal and some of those other ones in Lebanon. But uh, he was said to actually come here to Moonshine Church on Sundays and then would went go home and go with the individuals and eat with them their, their midday meal. He was said to uh, kiss babies which at that time was uh, something that 
they would do to, you know, in tradition to stave off like whooping cough, which was something that was a big thing at that time. Uh, and he also bought candy for the local kids. And once again, how much of that's true? Um, sometimes history is sugar-coated. I was told by my friend Ralph Watts as well that he actually crossed over the mountain and worked in the s and uh, Railroad, which a collier's lifestyle was usually took up about three quarters of the year. So they usually were pretty reclusive. So some of these things they talk about, if he truly was a collier, how much of that would have actually been true or even possible, pretty much don't know. Uh, he was known as a mountain man. He lived off the mountain. His shotgun is actually owned by the Lebanon County Historical Society and is there for viewing. Uh, but how much is, is legit of his story and how much is just legend, nobody really knows. Uh, but a lot of people, he worked with the local farmers, was considered to be beloved. People really, really cared about him and loved him. And I hope that story is true because um, a lot of times people didn't experience that of African-American descent. So we're going to go down to the memorial. I'll talk a little bit more. We'll show that. And then we'll go down to Greenpoint School Road where uh, Henry Wise is buried at the Greenpoint Meeting House uh, Cemetery. Hello again, this is Jonathan Miller with Hometown Historian. This is actually going to be the third part of a video about Joseph Johns, the uh, legend of Joseph Johns. He was uh, an African American who escaped slavery in the uh, state of Virginia. He was on a plantation for corn and cotton and he escaped north. Now there are several variations of the story. Uh, it was, I believe, it was in 1844 when he escaped. Now either one other individual or two individuals escaped with him. Unfortunately, whether it was just one or if it was two, they were captured. And uh, whether via fugitive slave laws or in the process before they got out of the South. Uh, now Joseph Johns spent a bit of time in Dauphin County as a woodcutter, eventually made his way east over to Union Township, uh, which is the area that he's in is known as Greenpoint. Now at that time, it wasn't known as Greenpoint yet. It was more of a collection of villages. Uh, one of them may have been known as Greenpoint, but the collective, uh, they had Tomstown there, as well as St. Joseph Springs, which is uh, where the murder of Joseph Raber happened by the Blue-Eyed Six. And this community that I found out about, I actually found out about it uh, through a friend, Ralph Watts, who was in the Elk County video. He has a comic book shop called Comics and Paperback Plus. And that shop, he carries a bunch of different things that are of historical nature and a number of items from Lebanon County Historical Society. I happened to pick up a pamphlet from 1983 there was a driving tour for historical places in Lebanon County and uh, in this in the Union Township area where they were talking about Moonshine Church there was this, an area that was called a small community called known as Africa and this community was African Americans who had either escaped slavery or had been freed slaves and it was in the 1880s and it was pretty apparently vibrant community that was there near St. Joseph Springs, about maybe about a half mile away down towards any town gap. Now, unfortunately, from what I'm aware, nothing exists of this community anymore, like maybe some foundations, because when the Indian town gap bought land, uh, like St. Joseph Springs, where this murder happened, there was a whole village there. There's really nothing left. Maybe some foundations. I know there's a, a, a stone water trough that maybe still exists at the Brant's Tavern that was right there across Indian Town Run where the murder had happened of Joseph Raber. But this is one of those communities that had to exist, unfortunately, uh, because with African Americans that came north, a lot of times, you know, they have the old saying, out of the frying pan and into the fire. Uh, maybe this wasn't up north here. It wasn't like Jim, Jim, Jim Crow South, but uh, maybe didn't have to worry about lynchings quite as much and things like that, but they still, they had to stay in these communities, you know, not only because these are people that you knew and, and had similar life experiences, but it was for security. 
because if you were alone, you know, chances of something happening to you went up astronomically, which is an unfortunate part of our history. And uh, I think a lot of times, like, I never knew about this Africa community. Uh, I'd lived in Greenpoint for 25 years, and if it hadn't been for picking up this pamphlet, I would have had no idea that this existed. And there's actually apparently a cemetery that's on top of either of Second Mountain or up the hill there somewhere. It's off of Ammo Road. So unfortunately, it, this where this community was, this village, uh, you can't go there. It's illegal because it's on Gap Land and it's right on where they have a shooting range, artillery range, and, and mortar range. So the cemetery, unfortunately, from what I've been made aware of as well, there's not really anything that you can do there either because it's I had to explain to me it's like an EOD area which is unexploded ordnance so not only is it illegal to go there it, it's also very unsafe now Cliff and I Cliff the Wandering Woodsman and I are going to try to do more research on this uh, we're going to talk to Lebanon County Historical Society and see if they know more because if somebody's going to know more about this community especially being that it was on their pamphlet Hopefully, there's a good ending to this where even though there's nothing tangible per se that you can touch, you can't physically go to these sites, the cemeteries off limits. Uh, Cliff had done a video about a, a little over a year ago about an abandoned slave cemetery, an escaped slave cemetery that was up in Game Commission uh, land. And a viewer had made him aware of it and he had found it. And it's one of those things about history that sort of bothers you is like places like this that should be very significant should be celebrated the individuals that are buried there should be celebrated because they really were a very tenacious and courageous group of individuals and they should be appreciated they should be remembered their names should continue to go through history and and be appreciated for who they were because you know part of history is it's brought us to this present and as well, it helps us, if we learn from it, to forge forward. And uh, unfortunately, a number of these places just disappear into, the, uh, into time and into history and are forgotten. And it's unfortunate, and it really is a travesty that we don't know who these people were, at least at this point. Maybe it'll be a good ending and, and they'll have information and we can share that with you at some point. But at this stage, uh, we just don't know pretty much anything about this other than the name of the community and that it did exist these people existed and of their importance not only socially culturally but also historically uh, to us all uh, especially to the african-american community this is an important part of history and unfortunately just most people don't know about it um, i also like i had filmed this earlier today uh, at St. Joseph's Springs because it's as close as I could get because the Ammo Road area it's pretty impressive road and there's a military checkpoint there so it's really not somewhere that you can film I don't want to get arrested uh, and it's going to be pretty odd to be doing something like that right there uh, and like I said it's an area you're on military land at that stage and it's not something you just don't want to mess with that at this stage, no matter what the intentions are, how noble they are, they're not going to take it as that. It's just reality. Uh, part of what I wanted to talk about as well is the saying as well that those who do not know history are doomed to repeat it. Now, do I believe that we're going to repeat slavery? No, I don't believe that would probably ever happen again. That being said, the diminishing of the human spirit, the dehumanizing of another human being, the treatment as such, the inequalities, the prejudices, and all those things that led to those things happening in the first place, those can continue if we don't acknowledge history. And I think a lot of times, even if you're a selfless individual, we sort of live in this sphere of influence. And that sphere of influence involves those that we love, those that we care about, and unless somebody is within that sphere of influence that's going through those types of things personally, we don't always truly empathize. Like, I think we care in a lot of ways and people want to see equality, but if it doesn't touch you personally, it doesn't always affect you the way that it should. 
that we as a collective can get together and make sure that change happens and that these individuals like the community of Africa, like Joseph Johns and all those other individuals who went through slavery, something we will never ever truly be able to empathize with. I'll never truly be able to empathize with being an African American and that experience because I'm white, I'm male, and I don't have to go through those things on a daily basis. So not understanding those things, truly understanding, makes it hard sometimes to put yourself in another person's shoes. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't try, though. And I think sometimes when we don't have that personal connection with something, it's very easy, not even necessarily to say being dismissive, but to just sort of like, oh, they're just complaining or whatever. It's not really that bad when, in a lot of cases, it is that bad. And if we're ever going to be able to institute true change, change that is going to make others' lives better and equal to our own, we have to be able to look at things. We have to be able to look back at history, look at these people's struggles, look at the heroes that they are, because I truly believe these people are heroes because what they faced is completely incomprehensible to us today. It truly is. Unless you've experienced slavery, unless you've been treated in such a dehumanizing way, and that's your way of life, none of us really know what that was like. And that, that's why... A lot of these people, the attitude they had, the way they approached life, the strength of character, the tenacity of, of saying, I matter, I exist, I deserve equality. Those were things that were very frowned upon, and it was very hard for them to attain that. And that's something to be championed and to be celebrated that these people's spirit was what it was, and they deserved to be put there on that upper echelon of American folk and and they shown as the heroes that they are. And that's part of the travesty of them being forgotten and this community not being known and acknowledged because, and a lot of that's not just because people don't care, it's because they just genuinely don't know. It's ignorance to some degree. I could just guess it's the best way to explain it. And so let's look back at history. Let's look at our brothers and sisters' struggles. Let's use this as an example, this community of Africa, these individuals, whoever they were, wherever they came from, let's celebrate them and let's use them as an example. These are our brothers and sisters' struggles today yet that they're going through and let's make sure that there's a better tomorrow for all of us. Uh, so with that, I would say, let's remember Africa, let's remember these individuals, let's remember Joseph Johns, and like I'm going to say in uh, earlier two parts, because we will have visited the memorial at Bayshore Scout Reservation, talked about some of the legends about him, uh, the stories, how much is, is sugar-coated to make it a little bit nicer than it actually was, maybe a lot nicer than it actually was. And we also visited his gravesite at Moonshine Cemetery to talk about him a little bit more. Uh, and some of the discrepancies and just the reason there's certain things that we just don't know about Joseph Johns, but these are individuals that should be celebrated and be thankful that they were in our community community and the impact that they made and that they continue to make today. Let's remember them, let's celebrate them, and uh, let's continue to be students of history. And I will once again thank you for the opportunity to go on this adventure with you and to learn a little bit about history as well. I don't mean to wax on about things or ramble, but this is something that's extraordinarily important. It's extraordinarily important for us to remember this history and to not let it be just go into oblivion and be forgotten because these individuals do not deserve that. They deserve to be remembered. And that's part of the reason why Cliff and I both do what we do is, you know, we're both students of history, we both love history, but we also want to remember things like this that need to be remembered and you know once again if we don't know history we are doomed to repeat it and a better understanding of history also helps us to understand one another better because we all come from you know we're products of our history of our ancestors and their actions and their thoughts and the way they did things so thank you once again and uh this is a little different but i wanted to do this 
a little more personally because I felt the way I had videoed it before was a little more impersonal and it wouldn't have been necessarily right. Uh, this is how I feel about history. This is how I feel about these types of things. And I know a lot of other people like you feel the same way. So let's remember Africa. Let's remember Joseph Johns. And till our next adventure, we will see you again. Farewell. And uh, we'll see you about town. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hello again. I'm actually making a short ending to the Joseph Johns video. Uh, <coughs> today I was able to go uh, and do the uh, Blue Eyed Six video with uh, Clifford Zeller, uh, also known as uh, the Wandering Woodsman, to those of you that are fans and viewers. And I was actually decided to make a stop by the Lebanon County Historical Society. They have a, a really cool building there and they have a, a really neat gift shop which has a lot of books with uh, local historical significance. Didn't know it, but they actually have a book on Joseph Johns. So I was able to pick that up along with a number of other books. So I've got a ton of material. Like this was an awesome day. Like I, I picked up, it was like almost like 12 books. I actually picked up a book for Cliff as well on the French and Indian War and different things. There might not be a whole lot in there for what he's done because he's. I think he's hit a lot of the stuff locally, but <coughs> great find. I have to give a major shout out to the Lebanon County Historical Society. I will be visiting there again. A number of other books that I bought that I was very, very thrilled with uh, that I'd like to get as well. Uh, and other things that have to do with the local area. The Book of Joseph Johns, one of the things I said uh, at both the grave site and also at the stone is whether things were known or not. This book actually has... Uh, direct conversations with people that knew him and knew his circumstances and from his direct stories himself uh, Joseph Johns he actually was beloved like truly they loved him and apparently because it was a very German immigrant uh, community uh, a lot of them were had beliefs similar to the Quakers and were very very against, against slavery Apparently the area there in Union Township, which I am really, really proud of, has an awesome connection to Hanover and the Underground Railroad. And that community, Africa, was actually, they believe, the Hanover area of the Underground Railroad had set that up as sort of like a safe house community. They aren't sure necessarily whether they were escaped slaves or if they were freed slaves. But uh, the Joseph Johns, for instance, the farmer Fowler, and they found out from the Bay Shores, uh, the John D. Bay Shore, who actually donated like 200 some acres of land there to the Bay Shore Scout Reservation for the Boy Scouts. Uh, the Fowler family and the other local residents actually protected Joseph Johns, which I think is so awesome. Like really, really cool story. It makes me really, really happy. Here the local residents actually really <laughs> took on the posses and like the people that were going around because they heard about uh, Joseph Johns and I guess these other communities, or at least for Joseph Johns because he was, they said it might have even been earlier than 1844, like 1843, that they were searching for him to take him back to because they actually knew like who the, the slave owner was as well. And like his name Johns was actually the slave owner's last name was Johnson and a lot of times the slaves would take on the last because they didn't have last names they would take on the last name of the master or some part of that last name and they actually like let them know you come here you're dead like and these were people that were not violent people but they were willing to protect him with their life so that is really really cool uh, he was an individual that didn't ask for much he might have had two different separate huts, and like when he first came up, he actually worked for, I believe it was the Schuylkill and the Susquehanna Railroad, and eventually got into the lifestyle of a collier, but he was absolutely adored by the community. Like they, they were willing to protect him with his life, and they were also willing to protect these individuals uh, in the community known as Africa. As far as I do know, which I'm gonna try to find out more information, <coughs> you cannot ask access that site you definitely can't access where the community was because it is right there on military land and it sounds like the cemetery there is also that is in that EOD area so unfortunately those ones the tangible things 
you can't touch. It just is what it is. But it is cool to hear that the reason they were there was specifically because the community would protect them and, and would make sure that anybody that wanted to come do them harm, it wouldn't be done. So apparently they were able to live pretty decent lives. And this was one of those areas that was a safe house, which makes me very proud of my community and where I grew up. And it's a shame that more of that isn't known, but a lot of this with oral history, it just, it isn't known. And, uh, but yeah, it was, it was cool reading. There's a lot of information in this book. Uh, there are things that just don't know. Uh, but overall, it's a cool ending to this video uh, about Joseph Johns and the community of Africa to be able to find out things like that and find out that these were actually very good circumstances and, and it wasn't just sugar coated. This was actually how it was. And thank goodness for a number of these people, especially the people, once again, kudos to the Moonshine Church who really looked out for him and, and helped him. And they really like the Fowler family paid for his funeral and for all of that and took care of him. And these were really great people. So with that, I will say goodbye and, uh, we will see you about town. Thanks, everybody.